Recording in progress. Call to order the regular meeting of the Rio Del City Council. Roll call, please. Mayor Barnes? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Carter? Here. Councilmember Orr? Here. Councilmember Wilson? Here. Councilmember Woodall? Here. Please stand for the pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public presentations. This is the time for persons who wish to address the council on matters not on this agenda and over which the council has jurisdiction. As such, a dialogue with the council or staff is not allowed under the Ralph M. Brown Act. Items requiring council actions not listed on this agenda may be placed on the next regular agenda for consideration if the council directs, unless a finding is made by at least two-thirds of the council that the item came up after the agenda was posted and is of an urgency nature requiring immediate action. Please limit comments to three minutes. Anyone out there in the vast public? Are there any hand raised? Any emails? No. Okay, then we will close this uh, section and move to the consent calendar. Is there anyone who would like to remove an item from the consent calendar? Uh, 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 uh. Then I would call for a motion to approve the consent calendar. So moved. We have a motion and a second. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries five zero. Staff reports, report staff communications. City manager, page 28 in our packet. Uh, thank you, Mayor Barnes, uh, members of the council. Um, staff, I, first of all, I just want to mention um, yesterday, I believe it was around five o'clock, we did have a fire uh, at the infiltration gallery. It's about 4 p.m. Or 4 p.m. Yeah. So um, uh, the, there was no damage to the infrastructure, so there's no damage to the water system still is operating. Uh, but it was caused apparently by some uh, juveniles with uh, fireworks, if I'm correct on that, Randy. And uh, oh, that's what I heard with my own ears. <laughs> yeah. Um, so again, we just want to encourage parents to, you know, really. Um, educate their kids about the proper use of, uh, of fireworks and particularly brushy areas and without adult supervision, uh, very important because uh, the fire potentially uh, could have been worse at a different, uh, different year during a drought or something along those lines. But we do appreciate uh, the Rio Volunteer Fire Department for getting out there and extinguishing the flame in relatively short order. Um, so thank you. Um, so I don't have a whole lot to report on uh, this uh, agenda's uh, staff update. I will say we do have a, an agenda item later to discuss uh, the former Todd property uh, here in Rio Del. Um, that uh, staff is having multiple meetings with uh, our city engineer on the various projects uh, coming forward with the city. Uh, and we are also working on a new grant application through the housing mitigation um, grants that are through FEMA uh, for uh, one of the city council's longtime priority projects, which is uh, solar uh, down at the city's corporation yard. And uh, we're very excited about that potential. It could be a unique project. Um, they have uh, been responding. Uh, to us and helping us to make the grant as competitive as possible through the through the process. So we really appreciate FEMA's uh, help with that um, application. Um, and then uh, hopefully at our next council meeting, we can provide an update uh, regarding our uh, Monument Road slip out on um, twenty in the twenty seventeen winter storms. Uh, we had a, a slip out of Monument Road at the 
uh, boundary of the city and the county. So the city and the county are cost sharing in this particular project and our bids have uh, come back pretty good. Uh, but now FEMA's holding up the final approval and the contractor is uh, uh, only verbally holding uh, their bid uh, currently. So it may have to go out to rebid if FEMA doesn't respond soon. Uh, but we are working with Congressman Huffman's office on that to particular issue. And then just one other kind of just fun note, um, some of the new vehicle graphics for the police department are rolling out. I think the uh, community services officer's vehicle has uh, the basic new uh, design. So if you see that in the parking lot, uh, check it out. Uh, they will be rolling that out over the next few months to the other, other vehicles. So uh, kind of exciting news. But with that, uh, I'm happy to Answer any questions that the council may have. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, City Manager. Mayor Bookham? I have no questions. Thank you, and thank you for thanking the fire department and the police department because everybody was there right away. Right. Yeah. Right. That's it. So, um, Health Member Roar? No, no questions for me. Health Member Woodall? Yeah, Travis, I just have a question on your um, page here to schedule the logistics with capital tire for the tire drop off event. Do we know when that's going to be in? <clears throat> yeah, it's going to be on Saturday, August 19th. It's going to be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it's Clean California through Caltrans is going to be advertising this uh, on behalf of the city. Uh, I'm sure we actually just executed that agreement earlier today. So we'll be getting the word out on that. Uh, but so Castle Tire is the company who will be providing the two trailers where the tires will be retrieved. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And she posts his dad's photographs. They make your designs. Who designed them? Placed out of Seattle. They look nice. I like the colors. And the Councilmember Wilson? I have no questions. Okay, are there any um, hands raised? Any emails? Anyone in the public? Audience there? Okay, then um, we will close. I Special call items. Conduct public hearing and approve the list of delinquent sewer accounts to send to the auditor controller for placement on the tax roll. Page 33 in our packets. City manager. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Travis. Yeah. Good evening, Mayor Garns and members of the City Council. <clears throat> On July 6, 2023, the Riedel City Council adopted Ordinance 399-2023 to allow the city to send delinquent sewer charges to the auditor controller and add them to the tax roll as a lien. The city is required to follow protocol for health and safety code 5473 including holding a public hearing. During this hearing, the city must hear and consider all objections or protests to the written report referred to in the notice. If the city finds the protest is made by the owners of a majority of the separate parcels of property described in the report, then the report shall not be adopted and the charges shall be collected separately from the tax roll and shall not constitute a lien against any parcel of land. Upon conclusion of this hearing, the city may adopt, revise, change, reduce, or modify, and charge or able rule any or all objections and shall make its determination upon each charge as described in the written report, which determination shall be final. On or before August 10th of each year, following the final determination, the clerk shall file with the county auditor controller a copy of the report pursuant to section 5473. It is that recommendation to open the public hearing receive public input and deliberate. Furthermore, staff recommends approving the final list of delinquent sewer accounts to send to the auditor controller for placement on the tax bill. Thank you for your time this evening. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. And as Director Sam Bourne. Councilman Woodall? No. Councilman Wilson? No. Councilman Roar? No. Mayor Pope No question. And I have no questions. Um, are there any um, members of the public who have any questions or protests? Are there any emails or hands raised for yes. comments or protests? Then, um, are there any discussions, further discussions that we had last week? 
Okay, then I will um, close the public hearing and um, ask if there is a motion to approve the final list of the delinquent sewer accounts to send to the auditor controller for placement on the tax rolls. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. There is a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Motion carries 5-0. Receive staff update on the status of the former Todd property, now owned by the state of California. Page 41 in our packet, City Management. Thank you, Mayor Garns, members of the council. <clears throat> so, uh, for folks who are just not aware of what the Todd property is, uh, that is uh, just a common nomenclature that's used for the property. It is the large. Uh, Eight, roughly 18 acre parcel undeveloped on the southwest corner of US 101 and Davis Street. It's a kind of direct smack center of the city of Rio Del. Um, so that uh, property um, is, uh, is undeveloped. Uh, formerly, it was a, a pasture uh, with one uh, small uh, ranch house and uh, barn. Uh, adjacent to it's actually composed of two parcels, which are listed in the the, the numbers are listed on the agenda. If uh, folks are curious in the uh, exact uh, parcel configuration there, um, so uh, historically the city has been interested in seeing the top property uh, developed, uh, as most cities are interested in seeing. Uh, development of particularly poor, undeveloped uh, parcels. Uh, this stretches back many decades in different uh, attempts and different approaches in terms of development. Uh, and so, uh, including recently, the, um, however, the top property did sell on April 27, 2023, for $1,820,000, and the buyer was the state of California. Um, so the property is now under the control of the California Department of General Services, or DGS for short. That's sort of the umbrella organization that handles a lot of the common internal issues between state and state departments, including real estate uh, for the state of California. Um, the property, what looks uh, to be the future home, the property is proposed to be the future home of the Humboldt Del Norte uh, Cal Fire Regional Headquarters. So the current location for Cal Fire Headquarters is in uh, Fortuna, kind of centrally located off of uh, North Fortuna Boulevard um, there in town. So we do know uh, a couple of things. Uh, Cal Fire you know, has been interested in at least two different locations, potentially three different locations, either within the city of Fortuna or immediately adjacent uh, to the city of Fortuna. Um, and we know that one of which was highly preferred by the local headquarters. However, for reasons that are still not entirely clear, um, the state eventually moved forward with the Rio Del location. So some of the parcels that they were looking for were uh, equal size, and some of them were on the 10-acre uh, size um, scale. Uh, today, staff has had two meetings with representatives of the Humble Delaware unit, and what has been conveyed to us is that Cal Fire intends to use uh, the full 18 acres. Uh, that uh, they're beginning a design process that's likely to last about two years, uh, and occupancy of the site after design and construction could be as early as 2028, or 2030 is probably a little bit more of a realistic timeline uh, for that site to be fully developed and then ready to be occupied. So uh, according to local representatives of CAL FIRE, uh, the agency is looking at the next 100 years of expansion. Uh, and that what, this, what we can infer from that is that this probably does not necessarily mean that all 18 acres will be developed by 2030, uh, but will be set aside for potential development for potentially 100 years from now, the year 21-23. Um, so, 
that is what the, the local Cal Fire representatives have indicated, which is that uh, their staffing has expanded uh, significantly, that their role is increasing, not decreasing, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and they have also indicated to us potential co-location with uh, the United States Forest Service, um, which is currently headquartered in uh, Eureka, however, it's unlikely that the whole headquarters would be moved, but the Adele is potentially certain components that could be moved there. So, uh, so why should this be a concern to the Rio Adele community? I, I will get to that, but I want to first point out that there are several uh, benefits potentially to CAL FIRE coming to Rio Adele. Uh, one is CAL FIRE is a significant employer. Um, and the top property has always needed, uh, and, and what the city's always desired out of, out of the location is some sort of anchor, uh, not just for the, for the site itself, but for the community itself. Uh, so different ideas have been tossed around, some of them pretty fantasy oriented, like a Home Depot or a water park or, or something along those lines. Uh, but certainly uh, a Cal Fire regional headquarters uh, would be a um, icon and an identifiable uh, uh, central hub to the, to the communities that would, be, would, would turn Rio Del into almost a, the uh, Cal Fire community. That would be in the broader scheme of Humboldt County and the region. When people think of Rio Del and they go, what's there? Uh, you know, some people might refer to the old uh, mini golf, you know, so on and so forth. In this case, it would be Cal Fire. Uh, so it would have a positive connotation um, that certainly the, the community, I think, would embrace and be very receptive to. It's a, it's a it's positive um, home of the heroes type uh, arrangement that uh, that would be positive. In addition to which, there would be obviously a lot of employees on site uh, who would you know want uh, access to lunch services, so on and so forth. Be interested in potentially moving uh, to the town for a shorter commute uh, or to the general area. Um, so there are there are several. Uh, great things about this uh, development. Uh, there are some concerns here, as there would be with any type of development. So under the current <laughs> course, the site uh, would not be available for housing or any kind of commercial type development, which creates a literal hole uh, in the city's general plan um, which potentially impacts the city's regional housing needs allocation compliance. In the current general plan, 100 housing units are identified as uh, potentially being developable at the site. So REIT is important because it's this uh, <coughs> guideline and rule from the state saying how we meet the housing targets that are the statewide priority. And so right now with the uh, Danco project having come online about three or four years ago, Rio Del actually pretty much meets all of its RENA uh, allocations, meaning we don't have any problem with the state or meeting uh, the state's housing uh, goals. If anything, um, the city is short on uh, what is considered upper income housing. Uh, so that's where we don't necessarily might have the biggest problem in terms of unit compliance. Uh, but obviously, 100 units is is 100 units. We're pretty significant uh, dent into that. Uh, that potentially impacts future transportation funding because always implicit in the city's RENA allocation is a threat that if we don't meet RENA allocation numbers that the state can sanction transportation dollars as a result. And of course, they're in a much broader battle with other very wealthy Southern California cities over development, um, but it still has that potential impact uh, here in Rio. Also attached to your packet is an RFQ, so request for qual uh, qualifications uh, for 
as essentially project management and development services from Department of General Services. And that uh, starts on page 42 of your packet. And really the most important part is right on the top of that first page on page 42, discussing the project description, um, which indicates some of the concerns that staff has looking at this is its own independent water system, its own independent uh, leach field system. Um, we don't really see anything here that says integrate with the community in, in any way. So one of the concerns we have is just the island effect, kind of taking this parcel, um, cutting off connectivity, uh, you know, the potential for connectivity between neighborhoods, uh, and placing this, this large uh, block under uh, restricted use. Um, it takes prime real estate for commercial and housing development, turns it over to the state. The state largely gets to bypass um, any local regulations, any local permitting processes, any uh, method for the city to try to um, uh, mitigate and integrate the design and the process that to the city. So we can force them to consider certain impacts. Uh, and certainly through EIR, they would have to take a look at that. Um, but largely the city is, uh, well, the city has to comply with state law. The state does not have to comply with its own laws. So hence the disparity between housing being the number one priority here and then 100 units being taken out of potential development uh, down the road. And we're talking about development that it could have occurred, occurred in five years or 100 years. Um, it still uh, will be taken off the table entirely. Um, we've also, in, in doing some research, looked and discovered that uh, really comparable facilities, headquarters facilities throughout the state of California are sited on five to seven acre plots. So 18 acres is quite a large piece of land for a facility that currently sits on about three acres in Fortuna right now. We, we know it's undersized, they need more space, certainly. Um, but again, this is not necessarily the highest and best use of the land. Uh, and it also potentially puts it into a situation where surplus land in the state of California, the government is now looking at state-owned surplus land and turning that over uh, to low-income housing uh, developments. Again, with it being state-owned, no real local control, no real um, uh, guidance, and that could happen as a part of this plan, or that could happen 10 years from now, so, or so on and so forth, depending on where the priorities of the state move. And obviously housing is something that is gonna take decades to solve. Really. Um, so, you know, moving, the other implication here is, <clears throat> And I know that the council knows all about this and we've been working on this um, and identifying it as a major problem, but a thriving commercial core is really the lifeblood of any city. So the ability to have residents, be able, visitors be able to stay in a hotel, gas stations, commerce is really what funds a city operation under the way that the state of California works and the way that revenues work. Uh, it's really important for there to be a thriving uh, business center. So this essentially takes 18 uh, acres of prime green property completely out of the economic equation uh, for Rio Del. And even if all the CEQA rules and everything were to apply, CEQA doesn't cover the financial impact of proposed developments. Uh, we know that the cost to support the police department continues to go up year after year. Uh, we know that uh, that the city has to do something uh, regarding economic developments. The council's identified the economic development plan and the top property was really one of the central components 
uh, of that economic development plan. So in the long term, this is potentially was, well, certainly there would be some benefit to it. The, the reality is that we believe, the staff believes, and I know that uh, the members of the community that I've talked to and council members that I've talked to have all said that there's got to be a way to meet everybody's needs with 18 acres in such a huge space that Cal Fire can get everything that it wants and that some of it can be split for commercial and housing development um, uh, in the future. And that would make a better end product that integrates with the community uh, that provides uh, additional economic activity in the community, long-term sustainable development, housing, and all of that. And so that is what we have been trying with uh, the state, with uh, the representatives from Cal Fire, uh, with uh, our local legislative leaders uh, to try to impress upon them that you know there is a third way of doing this, and that is going to be what everybody wants, including the governor, who's stated time and again that housing is the number one priority. Uh, and so, you know, that is right now, uh, you know, just staff's take on that. Um, and we certainly want to hear back from the council in terms of where you would like to see us go, either back off on on this or you know continue uh investigating but right now what staff is proposing to do would be to continue uh to monitor and expand the monitoring of this proposal uh including reaching out to the housing and community development department the state architects state lands and public works commissions uh in addition to legislative outreach we've already been engaging uh for example senator mike mcguire uh, on this issue, we intend to kind of uh, add to that uh, advocacy. Um, we also need to start identifying uh, potential impacts of this development and also just making the broader public aware uh, of the proposal uh, to help identify those impacts because this would be uh, abutting uh, a neighborhood, this would be um, potential traffic impacts. Uh, you know, potential radio communications tower. Um, there's a drainage impacts. There's interfacing with the water and wastewater system. If in fact that's uh, going to happen, um, so there there's a lot to look at here. And unfortunately, uh, investigating those it comes really at the cost of the city to um, to identify those and. and you know, um, suss out what needs to be done to to better integrate the project uh, to the community. So, um, so with that, um, I will return it to the council. And again, I'm just looking for general uh, uh, direction from the council as to you know what to what to, uh, individually you'd like to see and as a group you'd like to see. And again, I remind the council that. Um, you know, we can uh, uh, we can drop the the issue and, and not um, further investigate, and not continue to try to provide updates, I and mean, then all the way ramped up to uh, further discussion. Obviously, anything that would go to a closed session, we don't want to discuss here uh, in the open session. But uh, but this is our opportunity to uh, to kind of discuss this in the open, open session. Thank you. Councilor Orr? Um, I absolutely think we should pursue questioning and investigating. Like you said, that was that's a huge chunk of what could be um, added to the new business in the area. I mean, we're, we're limited on the downtown and on the main street. Um, there little space that we could use, but especially freeway front space stuff. So, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Councilor Wilson. I agree with Councilor Warren. I'd like to see it pursue what you can. I don't think you know the uh, proper hands like other agencies have done uh, other places. The 
it, it is disappointing, but like I think he made a comment about the the state required everyone else to apply for the rules, but they don't have to apply them. And so, um, is what it is. But I, I do encourage that um, you would do that. The other, other question is, uh, uh, when they say they're in an independent water system, are they looking to draw water out of the river? Are they looking to just take our water system and put it into a closed loop like Disneyland or something? Put a, that they use their own water system? What is, what is that? So according to the, um, the RFQ, it would, would be essentially a development of a well at the site. And I will tell you that we just had a, a conversation, we had a meeting with the city engineer on unrelated subject and we brought this up. And, um, and he said that that was highly unlikely to uh, produce any uh, real results uh, just based on the, the Groundwater, how it, uh, you know, the composition of the ground and just below the surface, that there's mostly a sheeting effect across much of town um, that uh, that goes directly into the river. There is a, a, a fairly high water table, but just below that is essentially chalk or something that's impermeable. So you have to drill either super deep um, or um, or you're likely not to um, not to hit something. And, and just as a side note, we have had a developer who uh, drilled, I believe, a 600 foot well on the Dinsmore Plateau, spent that money, and came up with absolutely nothing. So while Rio Del is there's no shortage of of water in the immediate area, and there are certain uh, places where water is plentiful. Just sinking a well center in town is not going to be sufficient for a facility of that size. So, and, and if it is, uh, if they happen to get lucky, it's going to be more on a, on a residential size to, to meet their needs. And I don't think it's cost effective um, for them to do anything other than to connect to the city's water system. Uh, you know, but we'll, we'll, we'll see um, what exactly they, they come up with over the next couple of years. Right, well, for the short term, business is going to be Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Fontaine. Um, I would say keep investigating and pursuing. I mean, what does it seem like when you talk to the local representatives? Like, how does, I mean, you don't have to answer that. That's a weird question, but <laughs> that, that's the question that's in my brain. It's like, where is this going and what is the vibe? But, yeah, well, first of all, our, our local representatives are great. They're fantastic people. Yeah. Uh, they're really heroes in the community and have done a lot of really great things. Um, you know, but in, in an agency the size of CAL FIRE, I think uh, these decisions are being made at the very top level. And uh, that involves a state bureaucratic process that involves DGS, which is a whole other animal that mostly serves internally uh, the state apparatus. So it's very much not a public interfacing agency. DGS, not California. DGS. Right. So, wow. Okay. Well, tell them it's haunted or invested by sandworms. That's <laughs> 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 my thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, okay, your cat quality is probably is positive like that. Um, yeah, I would, I would agree with uh, the, the previous developers too. Just, yeah, do what you can and keep letting us know. I'm very curious. And Sam works. Thank you. Councilman Woodall. Yeah, same here. Just do all the avenues. And like my grandmother used to say, squeaky wheels get the grease. Okay. So just keep at it. So I think we're all in agreement. And are there any uh, public comments? I just had a question. When is the next time that the arena numbers are coming out that we would have to report that we no longer have those 100 slots? When would that be? Okay. So I don't know the answer to that question off the top of my head. I do know that the state is re, uh, that there is a process underway to recalculate the arena numbers, in which case, <clears throat> Uh, most likely they would only become larger 
and not a small loop. So on top of uh, this uh, portion being taken out, um, there is going to be a new reformulation that probably increases the requirement uh, on top of that. Anyone else? No. Any emails or hand raised email? And I think you got you have one we need from us. Yes. Um, you know. Next update from the mayor on the citizens' recognition for earthquake response. So this is um, back in, in December, after December 20th and um, January 1st, when everybody came, you know, to help the city, to help um, distribute food, to distribute water, to do all of the, the good things there were. Um, the whole community came out. The whole community tried to do what they could do, and and still are trying to do what you know we can do to help each other. There were three young men, however, who went above and beyond what most young men would be doing. You know, they came out on their own without being asked, and they were there every day. A teenager, an eleven and a ten year old, I believe, at the time, and so. I, I really thought that they should be recognized. And one of the most important things in my mind um, to keep youth engaged, to keep them you know, invested in the city. And these three um, kids were totally invested. We need to recognize them. We need to know, let them know that we see them and that we appreciate them. And what they did it was absolutely noticed. And um, so to that end, I thought, well, you know, um, I talked to um, someone back in January and, and talked about um, a resolution, a proclamation, a resolution, I think, is where they come in and you, you recognize them. But I thought, you know, it, we don't have a big group here to recognize. And youth probably aren't going to be, I mean, they'll be happy with a, a piece of paper, but that piece of paper is going to get lost. And so I thought it would be a nice thing if we did like a good citizens award to to these three young men and on a, uh, give them a plaque um, during Wildwood days when there's an audience where their friends can see them being recognized and appreciated. They can be applauded. The city as, you know, we, we can be there and show them that we as the city appreciated everything that they did to help. And so to that end, I went to city manager and asked him if that's, you know, something that we could do. Um, and um, he got the uh, city clerk and we had a conversation about it and decided, well, that's probably something we could do. And then I thought, well, but the city council really needs to be on board with this too. Um, and, um, and hopefully be able to come to the, uh, I, I'm thinking, you know, the Sunday of the barbecue um, and, and just show them just we're all there for them like they were there for us. And so I just, that is an update. It's just um, if, if there's any questions or objections to it, then, you know, that needs to be, to be said, but that's all this, um, item is about is recognizing the youth that stood up for the city of Riodale. And um, I really, truly really think that by doing this, it's a way that we can let other youth in Riodale know that we are paying attention, we do appreciate it, and hopefully engage the youth to become more involved in the city in different activities and you know, so that's basically what this this item was or is and so um yeah if there are any questions council member woodall no so are we talking about i mean this at the barbecue or maybe at the parade put it in the parade well, I, mean, I hadn't thought about putting them in the parade. <laughs> I was thinking at the barbecue, you know, yeah. because of um, or, to get okay, well, them to class. And what everybody do is fine because you're right. Kids need to be, you know, noticed for what they do. And yeah, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. I also think it's a great idea um, that the, the the teenager kid was, I mean, I saw him day in, day out, every, every single day for over a month. And he was there early in the morning. 
It so late at night. There until it closed. I think I brought the kid cookies at one point. <laughs> I mean, just, yeah, he, he, they were really, really something. Um, and then there's so many pictures of the little ones handing out waters and stuff. So I, I do, I, I really like this idea. If you have any contact information at the, uh, from the fire department with how to actually, who to talk to to make this happen. <laughs> you, uh, yes. Or are you? Or the or you the, know more than the right. Yeah, we do. Okay. I only have two people. So anyway, we can talk about that. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I just keep harassing the same two people. Yes. I love this idea. Thank awesome. you for coming up with it. Okay, Thompson. Or um, as a teacher witnessing the degradation of societal cohesion from the youngest members of society, I think anything we can do to honor those that are worried about their communities, maybe. Right. Thank you, Councilmember Wilson. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I don't know that you know if I spark up the kids to do something. I don't know. I would put a lot of faith in that, but I, you got it. Uh, but I, but I, when I see people, young, young people that are that are doing what they're doing, they certainly want to encourage it because these are the ones that they turn out to either sit here or become the future fire chief, police chiefs, uh, leaders of the community, if not this community, some other community. And so, um, I, I don't want to have have the memory of yeah, when there was an earthquake and we did this and the city really don't ever. Ever did anything to at least say thank you? So, definitely want to acknowledge them and give some recognition. Thank you for the idea. Sure, thank you. Are there any um, questions from? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say put them in a parade. Um, if you can, let them ride a fire truck, right? You know, I think that would be terrific. In addition to giving them something right, right. on Sunday at the barbecue. Um, cause that's terrific. And you're right. The kids need the recognition. It's also good to show the community itself. We've got these young people in our community and they should be celebrated. And I would also encourage following it up when school goes back into session, hopefully the schools are going to be addressing with the kids at the beginning, um, maybe in, in a group at the auditorium or whatever, the earthquake experiences that everybody went through. Um, and talking to them, and it would be really nice maybe at that point to also recognize the kids. Oh, during the summer, they were, you know, recognized from Wildwood and have the city come with the school because it really needs to be kind of a holistic approach and addressing this with the kids a little bit at the school. Um, and so that's a really good teaching point in a little bit. And then you could talk a little bit about what the kids did and things that kids can do at home to, you know, be disaster ready and know where their flashlights are and that kind of thing. But it's a really good teaching opportunity. And I say, let them ride on those trucks, right? <laughs> I think Carter's on the, I think he's on the uh, volunteer fire department now. He was too young then, but he was waiting for his birthday. So he could get his truck on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other comments? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Are there any emails? Um, in response to what you said about taking a holistic approach, I would even say send it up to HCOE and let the uh, Office of Education know that these people, I mean, they may not all go to schools in the area and make right. different places, but just. And, I mean, I don't think that's taken any far at all. Oh, no. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Okay. And that doesn't even require anything. So, other than just information and agreement. Thanks for keeping us in the loop. Absolutely. And now we will move on to our ordinances and special resolutions. Second reading by title only um, and adoption of ordinance number 400. 2023 amending chapter 2.05.010 and 2.10.162 of the Rio Del Municipal Code, changing the meeting time for the regular city council meetings from 6.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. Page 49 in our packets, city manager. Thank you, Mayor Norris, members of the council. So at our last uh, city council meeting, uh, we held the first reading uh, of this uh, of this proposed uh, 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 ordinance, and so uh, the ordinance is very simple, and I, I will try to keep it short. Which is moving the uh, original start time of the Rio Del City Council meetings from six thirty to six pm. No other changes. Um, so this was uh, 
Uh, the idea was generated by staff um, and looking at some of our other uh, uh, comparative cities and other public meetings. Uh, Rio del Holt, there starts its meeting, uh, uh, one of the latest meetings. So moving into six o'clock, we think would be more convenient for the public attending, uh, for members of the council and for staff, uh, and hopefully when we, uh, we won't have any late meetings, although we haven't had them, uh, super long meetings in, in quite a while, but they, they have occurred in the past. So starting a little bit earlier uh, might be uh, beneficial for everybody. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and return to the council. And our recommendation is to open the hearing, or the second hearing, uh, see if there's any additional comments, uh, and then uh, uh, consider that comment and then uh, move to adopt. Councilmember Wilson? Yeah, just, I see you more than got any agenda, but um, there's basically coming to the fifth is our first piece, so that the people walk them and home that they know it's out stage. Correct. So any ordinance that is passed by the city council has a 30-day waiting period before it goes into effect. Um, and so the first meeting where we would move, move the time would be to 6 p.m. Start Starting time at 6 p.m. would be September 5th. Thank you, Councilman Hill. That fine with me, Rich, September 5th. Yeah. <laughs> he was here at 6 o'clock tonight. Oh, oh. oh. really? It's over 5 30. Okay, are there any questions um, from the public? Huh? Any emails? Keep looking at you. Any hands raised? Any emails? There. Thank you. And I would um, ask for a motion to adopt ordinance number 400-2023, amending the Rio Del Municipal Code 20, yeah, sorry, 2.05.010 and code 2.10.160, altering the city council's regular meeting start time, start time from 6.30 to 6 p.m. There, so we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Motion carries 5 0. And after 30 days, September 5th, we will start our city council meetings at 6 o'clock. Council reports and communications. Mayor Potent. Thank you. Tomorrow at 3 p.m., we have our business advisory committee. Um, meeting here in City Hall, 3 p.m. open to the public, if anybody wants to come. Next, uh, I spoke on profits this Friday, July 21st, at the Social Lodge from 5 to 8 p.m. They do this every month on the third Friday of the month, where they choose a different nonprofit and proceeds go to benefit that nonprofit. Um, this Friday, it is the Rio Del Scotia Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. So anybody here, anybody listening, watching, if you want to come on out and, and have a beer and a cheeseburger or whatever, um, you will get a really good meal, and then also benefit your local community. So come on out for that, 5 to 8 p.m. Lastly, uh, Saturday, July 29th, we are doing a volunteer community cleanup day here along Wildwood Avenue. That will be from 9 to 11 a.m. The meeting point is at the Resource Center. We'll provide gloves, buckets, vests, garbage picker up or things um and even some coffee and some tea and some baked goods and whatever so anybody who would like to come spruce the town up right before wildman is in office to pull some weeds and pick up some garbage that would be saturday july 29th 9 to 11 a.m i will read that meeting monday that's it thank you it sounds remember what all do the baked goods come you <laughs> know, I'll just for you. Okay. Yeah. okay. I ordered more of that smoked sugar coffee for you. Only one important thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to have a board meeting with the fire department. And one interesting thing that I thought was I didn't know that they were putting the new bridge in to Shively. No. So they'll be able to take all their the bigger equipment across mm -hmm. to fight the fires. And that's about it. You covered everything. Got it. All right. You got it. Thank you. Councilman Roller. 
uh, HCOG meeting on Thursday. Um, more to follow. That's all right. Uh, Member Wilson? Yes, we were supposed to have an HWA meeting, and some of us went in there and some of us didn't. And it didn't, yeah, it was canceled because there wasn't a call. So uh, they were given an update on 1383, which we didn't get to get, but they, they probably won't in the future. Yeah, that's really uh, the RCA next year. But that's all I have. Oh, I wanted to mention again that if anyone's interested in being on the Community Act uh, Community Advisory Committee for our CDA, that there's uh, Riddell has an open place for someone to do that. And so they just need to either, either contact me, contact uh, our CDA, and uh, fill out a form and then go work and get them approved. And that's just any community member? It is any community member can do it. And I don't know that they have worked on like a council member on the only on community by a hand. Why could I think of one community member? You're a community member, so I don't know. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I think they will be interested. And um, I have a meeting tomorrow with the long term recovery group and uh sending the wire and um uh, city manager and then on Thursday at a seismic safety commission meeting. And um, uh, rather than going to Sacramento this time, I'm sit I had to stay here, it's my foot. So I'll be here, it'll be in the, ch I mean, they won't be here, but I'll be here in the chamber. And so if anyone wants to come and listen or have, you know, whatever, to the seismic safety commission meeting, that will be um, um, Thursday from 10 to 1.15 p.m. And that's a public meeting, so anyone in the public is welcome to be here too. And I think that is all. Um, when's the, when's the, when's the, oh, boots and boogie, the oh, yes. Um, yes. Um, this Friday at the fire hall, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. will be lesson number one. And then the Friday after that, will be lesson number two. And if we need to review, I'm sure we can sneak one in on August 4th, but it's easy. It's, it's, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And um, don't forget about the Friday um, at Scotia Inn. That's a good thing. And they have excellent French fries. Yes, they do. Between, yes, they do. I mean, they like really, really excellent French fries. You know, they're right there with Bimbo, the two places that have the best French fries in Humble. <laughs> Scotia Inn and Bimbo. So um, with that, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. have a motion, a second. Yes. Oh, well, All right. Uh, I want to say hi to Nancy Kurt. Okay. We're going to adjourn. And you know.